Hey, a dragonborn, Crawfish Ginger Ale here with another Kato's Countdowns. Some things go together just right in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Stealth and archery, for example, go together like hands and beacons. So this countdown will go over the best unique tools of the archery trade when it comes to their base damage. Despite stealth archer stereotypes, these bows work well without having to sneak as well. You can expect me to tell you what the benefits are to using these bows, and since guides are a staple for the Kato Genesis channel, I'll be showing you how you can get them also. So these are the five best fletch flinging plate piercing, target testing, unique bows in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. There is just something about the things that the Dwemer make, and I strongly believe, like the Daedra, they're used as an excuse to make some outlandish and outrageous weapons and equipment that we can use throughout the Elder Scrolls. So that brings us to Zephyr, a unique dwarven bow with a base damage of 12. This part is the same as the regular dwarven bow. But Zephyr comes with a unique effect, and while equipped, Zephyr's draw speed is 30% faster than other bows. This effect can also stack with the Quickshot perk if you are investing in the Marksman Tree. I did not see a way to increase it further because I would have suggested Elemental Fury Shout, which increases the swing speed or draw speed of weapons that don't have enchantments already. But unfortunately, Zephyr's effect does count as an enchantment in this case, so you'll have to put up with a maximum possible of 60%, which is already fine, I would hope, for draw speed. I would like to add that thanks to Zephyr being nice and quick, it is something I would recommend using in medium range or even close range encounters because of how quickly you can loose arrows and end up turning the enemy into a pincushion before they even reach you. If you're going to upgrade it, Zephyr is a dwarven bow so it can be upgraded at the grindstone with a dwarven metal ingot, with dwarven smithing increasing those benefits. Now time to go over the location, which was added with the Dawn Guard expansion. Now either you can find a book called Aetherium Wars appearing pretty frequently on bookshelves within Castle Volgahar and Fort Dawn Guard. And when you pick up the Aetherium Wars and crack it open, it will start you on the quest lost to the ages or you can just show up at the dwarven ruin where this begins and start it that way and that dwarven ruin is called arcing thumbs along the mountains southeast of markarth after exploring for a short time you will encounter the ghostly visage of someone named katria ascend the collapsing dwarven ruin with her and after you reach the large clearing where she fell she will mention this on the log that she fell from will be her bow zephyr which Katria offers to the Dragonborn since she no longer needs it. Next is the prophetic artifact known as Ariel's Bow, a magical weapon with both unique looks and effects and has a base damage of 13. To get into the nitty gritty of the enchantment of Ariel's Bow, its magical effect deals 20 points of sun damage. However, thanks to the theme of the Dawnguard DLC, undead targets will take triple damage from this bow, meaning if you have invested in sneak as well and dealing bonus damage that way with the bow, you can deal up to six times damage with a sneak attack against an undead with Ariel's bow. And if the target's not undead, you're still dealing 20 points of sun damage. If you wish to upgrade it at the grindstone, you can do so with a refined moonstone and the elven smithing to improve it even further. And now let's go over the arrows that add even more fun effects to this bow. First is the sun hallowed elven arrow. If you fire one of these from Ariel's bow into the sun, there will be a giant burst and beams of sunlight will come down and hit enemies and allies alike that are around you, kind of like the storm call shout does, except with beams of light. Shooting the sun hallowed arrows at enemies will turn your bow shot into an area of effect on impact, making it great for crowds of enemies, especially crowds of undead. Now for the blood cursed elven arrows. These ones don't have an increased effect when fired at an enemy. However, when you shoot the blood cursed elven arrow at the sun, the sky will be darkened for around a day. If your dragonborn happens to be a vampire, you will then have access to the full range of abilities without any penalties because you're creating nighttime, basically. This may also help with sneak conditions if you are a sneak type character. I haven't tested that aspect too much, but I would hope that making it dark with the blood cursed elven arrows has an effect on all atmospheric lighting, not just the abilities vampires have during the night. Now the ordeal of getting Ariel's bow. I'd like to call this towards the end of Act 2 of the Dawnguard storyline. In any case, this is towards the end of the Forgotten Veil, vale, where you have to face off against Arch Curate Verther in the inner sanctum of Ariel's temple. Defeat him, and you will get 
Ariel's bow. Gelibor can convert your elven arrows into sun hallowed ones, while Serana can convert them into the blood cursed ones, 20 at a time. One last thing I wanted to note is once you get to this point of the storyline, Serene Gerard in Fort Dongard will sell large stacks of elven arrows pretty frequently. Speaking of a lot to it, there's a lot to go through in getting this one as well, the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate, but not quite as much. You don't have to go through the whole DLC to get this one. The base damage of the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate, just like Ariel's bow, is 13, but it has a very different enchantment. When an enemy is struck with an enchanted shot from the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate, on impact there's a 50% chance for each attribute to absorb 25 points of health, stamina, and or Magicka. I believe that calculates out to a 12.5% chance of all three effects going off at once. This enchantment makes it pretty great to switch to if you're in a panic mode of any kind when it comes to stamina, Magicka, or health and losing it. But it's still a gamble on what you're going to regenerate when firing this bow at an enemy. Since this is Dwarven craftsmanship, you do need the Dwarven smithing perk to improve it past the normal amount at a grindstone, but you will need an ebony ingot instead of a Dwarven one to improve it that way. Due to the nature of its enchantment being absorb, it is also semi-costly when it comes to recharging it with soul gems. So having a means to soul trap alongside this weapon is recommended. Now for where to get the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate, it is actually found in the Dwarven Ruin of Kagramez, due south of Mirak's Temple. What you need first are four Kagramez Resonance Gems, Two are on the reavers that are there already, so that only leaves two more. Revis Sarvani, the dark elf fellow that's hanging out next to his silt strider, has one that can be sold to you. And the fourth resonance gem can be found in Falbathars. That's another dwarven ruin in the mountains north of Ravenrock. Falbathars itself is a pretty large dungeon to go through, but in the final room that the treasure is held, the resonance gem will be sitting on a plate dead center. So, once you have all four of the Kagramez resonance gems you need, head there and take part in the Kagramez gauntlet. What you need to do here is arrange the resonance gems on the center pedestal to match the door you're trying to get through. The first door is a pattern of two gems, the second door is a pattern of three, and the final door is a pattern of four, yielding access to more and more treasure as you go, and finally, granting you access to the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate. The next one is a bit of an odd entry, it is the Glass Bow of the Stag Prince. But it's higher on the list, obviously, because it's got a decent base damage, which is 16. As the DLCs for Skyrim came out, there were a couple of weapons that got enchantments that would improve in strength the more you defeated certain enemies with that weapon. The Glass Bow of the Stag Prince has one of these enchantments, stating that the wielder receives an increasingly powerful blessing for every 20 animals killed by the bow. What it doesn't say at face value is that the maximum kill count for the benefits of the Glass Bow of the Stag Prince is 80, and thankfully the bow itself keeps count as well. Every 20 animals slain with the Glass Bow of the Stag Prince grant 5 to the wielder's health and stamina for a maximum of 25 health and stamina once you've reached 80 kills. So that's 25 to your max health and stamina while the bow is equipped. Since this is acquired in the Dragonborn DLC, and I doubt you would want to take a side trip to Skyrim just to get all the animal kills you need, here's a quick list of animals that you can find in Solstheim to increase the strength of your glass bow of the Stag Prince. On the coast of Solstheim is where you'll find the majority of the animals that you'll be seeking out. Herds of Netch can be found here and there in groups of 3 to 5, as well as Horkers and Mudcrabs. Inland, you'll be looking for boars and ash hoppers. Despite being an insect, the ash hopper does still count as an animal. On rare occasion, you might find a deer in Solstheim, but that shouldn't be the first thing you search for. This is still a more powerful variant of the standard glass bow, but it does still fall under that category of glass, so you need a refined malachite to fix it up at the grindstone and glass smithing to improve it even further. When you start getting more and more weapons throughout, your adventures in Skyrim and beyond, it's hard to find a place where the Glass Bow of the Stag Prince fits for the benefits that it gives. 25 health and stamina is pretty good, but it goes away as soon as you unequip the bow, so maybe a warrior type? would benefit from this the most, I'm open for ideas on this one. I do want to reiterate though that it is a powerful bow for when you get it, and the reason why it's higher on the list is because of its damage. So, if you want to get the glass bow of the Stag Prince, you simply need to find a merchant by the name of Phallus Sylvain at the Ramshackle Trading Post. If you go there during the day or any time besides midnight to 6am, you won't find him, but you will find a note that says meet me at this time show up between the hours of 12 and 6 a.m. and Phallus Sylvain should be there ready to peddle his wares. One of the things he can sell is the glass bow of the Stag Prince, but 
due to his inventory being mixed in with his merchant inventory, sometimes he can have the glass bow equipped. Now there are a few workarounds for this. One of the solutions is just giving him a glass bow that you've improved or something like that with a higher damage value so he equips that instead next time you see him, or pickpocketing it with the misdirection perk but that will mark it as stolen permanently. Or you can also sell him an iron dagger and then attack him, at which point he will pull out the iron dagger and use it on you. Then, if possible, you can sheath your weapon, and since he had unequipped the bow, he will be able to sell it to you then. The bend will shout can be used to take him out of combat status as well. So there's a few ways to get it. Not all of them are ideal, of course, but it seems like Phallisylvain wasn't supposed to be able to equip the bow in the first place. This is an honorary mention, and the only reason it's not on the top of this list is because it's not considered unique. Despite that, the Enhanced Dwarven Crossbow is the strongest marksman weapon in the entirety of Skyrim. This thing's base damage is 22, and since it is enhanced, the bolts fired from it also ignore 50% of the target's armor. Like bows, it can also be enchanted with whatever you please, and assuming you completed the quest to get it, have access to magical bolts as well that deal elemental damage. The Enhanced Dwarven Crossbow is just amazing. There are a couple of things you have to consider if you want to get it yourself though. Crossbows themselves were introduced with the Dawnguard DLC for Skyrim, so you'll need that. And also, when you choose who to side with, you will have to side with the Dawnguard to actually gain access to these upgrades, because it is only after you turn your back on Lord Harkon that Isran, the leader of Dawnguard, will send you off to get Serene Gerard and Gunmar. Do the Ancient Technology Radiant quests for Serene Gerard Gerard, starting with enhanced crossbow schematics and several quests later, ending with the enhanced dwarven crossbow schematic. Serene will offer to teach you to craft it, provided you have the dwarven smithing perk, or it will just sell you enhanced dwarven crossbows. Bear in mind that this is an ordeal still because it is radiant oriented. One of the issues that I ran into here is it kept sending me to Blood Skull Barrel before I had even gone to the Dragonborn DLC areas. So what I recommend with these radiant quests is saving outside Fort Dawnguard before you go to turn them in or start them. In case that situation happens to you too and you want to wait to do the other DLC stuff after you're done with this one. It is now time to talk about the most powerful unique bow in the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Another Nightingale weapon making its appearance like the one-handed swords countdown is the Nightingale bow. The base damage of this bow comes in at 19 as long as you pick it up at level 46 or higher, because this is also the only bow on this countdown that is part of a leveled loot pool. The level you pick it up at will also determine how strong the enchantment is that comes along with it, stating that it freezes the target for 30 points and shocks for 15 points. That is a huge chunk of elemental damage to come along with its high base damage. Again, as long as you get it at level 46 or higher. The bow itself sports a quite nocturnal look, matching the rest of the Nightingale gear, and while upgrading the bow only requires the Arcane Blacksmith because Ebony Smithing does not affect it, at the grindstone you will need an Ebony Ingot to do so. The Nightingale bow is so strong, and because it is based on a character archetype that is all about sneaking, it's almost like the game wants us to be sneak archers all the time. <laughs> Provided the enemy or target does not have any resistances to elemental damage, and you are sneaking and kitted out with a whole bunch of archery gear, you'll be dishing out pain that two-handed melee weapons tend to boast most of the time. When it comes to magical charges, I compared the Nightingale Bow to the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate and found out that the Nightingale Bow, despite its enchantment having two magical effects attached, had nearly double the amount of charges of the Dwarven Black Bow of Fate, and that's less soul gems you have to spend to keep it charged. And like many enchanted weapons, increasing your destruction skill will also increase the amount of charges the weapon will have. So there's no reason not to get the Nightingale Bow, but there is a bit of a barrier of entry to get it, because it is directly tied to the Thieves Guild questline, and is another Act 2 type situation. When Carlias spills the beans on the extra stuff that's going on behind the scenes at the Thieves Guild, and you reach the quest blindsided, you will go to Erkingthand with Brynjolf and Carlia to get a little closure on things. At the end of Blindsided, you receive several things of value, and among the things you receive, Carlia will be the one who gives you the Nightingale Bow. So I want to know from you what kind of bows you like to run with in Skyrim, or None at all. Or if you were just watching this video to show your support towards the Cato Genesis channel, to which I say thank you very much. Among the others I want to thank are my patrons, the people in the on-screen credits who support me via Patreon, including Wasteland Legends fan. Got any countdown suggestions? Leave it in the comments. Thank you so very much for watching. I'm Cato Genesis, and may you wander Tamriel like you own it.